All right, to start, let's add in a spatial node and we'll call it world and then add as a child, add in another spatial node and we'll call this uh, camera base. And then as a child of that, we'll add in a camera. And then next, let's add in a navigation node. And then as a child of that, add in a navigation mesh instance and a mesh instance as a child of that. And so on this mesh instance here, let's put in a plane and let's change material, new spatial material here, and let's change the color to something like that, just so it's easy to see. And then let's just scale it out pretty far like so. And then add in another mesh instance. And on this one, let's put in a cube, scale it up a fair amount and move it up a bit let's see like so and then i can go to mesh create convex static body and let's do that for the other one as well give them collision and then let's just duplicate this and move it around a bit and then go to here new navigation mesh on the nav mesh instance and then click bake nav mesh and you can see it just baked it you can tell by the green lines there and let's go to the camera base here I'm gonna move the camera back a ways and I'm gonna rotate this, let's say like 45 degrees or something. And let's see, move this back. So I hit normal or local there to move it back like this. And I click preview. Okay, looks pretty good. Uh, let's just save this scene real quick and then Next, let's go to here, create a custom node here. Kinematic body, let's call this unit and add in a collision shape. And to that, let's make it a capsule shape. Transform, let's rotate it by 90 degrees. Move it up by 1.5. And let's also add in a mesh with a cube. Let's make it scale it move it up a bit and make it easy to see there. Um, and then let's go add a material to it and change the color to, I don't know, something like that. Save the scene and let's add one more and let's just scale it out a bit and then move it along the Z axis here. And let's clear this material and add it and yeah, just leave it like that. So now we can tell which way it's facing. And then let's go and we need to change the collision on this. So let's go to project settings and let's go to 3D uh, layer names, 3D physics. And let's change the names of these layers. I'll call this environment and then I'll call this one units. And then go to input map and let's set uh, an input called main command. I guess we'll use this for movement. Go to mouse button, let's set it to right mouse button and then add that. Okay, so now if I go into collision of the kinematic body or physics body collision, if I hover over this, I have to refresh it. So if I go over this, now you can see it says environment and units there. And if I click this, you can also see it show up, the three the two dots there. So I want it to be on the units layer and not the environment layer. So I'll just set that. And now let's add a script to it. Clear this out. And this is just a copy of the code for my 3D pathfinding tutorial. So we're going to start with making an empty list called path, path index variable, which just tracks which node we're on in the path. And the path is just going to be a list of 3D points. And then our movement speed, which is 12. And then this will be a reference to the navigation node, which is this node right here. And then we're going to have a move to method, which just takes in a target position to move to. And it's going to call get simple path on that navigation node, which takes in a starting position, which is this unit's position, and then a goal position, which is this target position. Then it's going to set the path to be whatever is returned by that, which is going to be a list of 3D points. And then it's going to set the path index to zero, meaning start at the beginning. 
Then in the physics process method, we're going to check if our path index is less than the length of the path, the number of nodes in it, meaning we're still traveling along it, we haven't reached the end. Then we're going to get a vector pointing from our position to the node that the path index is currently pointing at. So whatever position is our current target position. And we take that position minus ours, and that gives us a vector pointing towards it. And we're just going to check if the length of that vector is less than 0.1 units. That means we're really close to it. Increment the path index, meaning go to the next um, target position along the path. And then otherwise, if it's greater than that, we're going to just move towards it at our movement speed. And this just means up is up. That's the floor normal for calculating floor collisions, which isn't really important for a 3D RTS. But I just keep it there for good practice. So next, we want to set up the camera. So if I go to here, um, let's go to camera base and create a script for this. Oh, before I forget, go to unit, go to node and groups, and then let's add it to the units group there. So that'll let us be able to access it easily from the camera. So go into our camera base script here, and we're going to add in a few um, values here. So constant, so this will be the move margin is going to determine how close to the edges of the screen you get to move the camera. So this means within 20 pixels of the edge of the screen. So about there, about, about there, and about there. And then this will be how fast the camera moves when you're at that spot. And then this is for the length of the recast for hitting ground or units, selecting units. And then this is just a reference to the camera node. So to start, let's calculate the movement. So we're going to create a calculate movement screen. Uh, method takes in the mouse position and then the time since the last frame. It's going to get the viewport size here, which is the screen size, and then it's going to create an empty vector for moving the camera. Then we're going to check if the mouse position's x position, which is the left right, is less than move margin. So this is zero position and this is screen size, whatever, 1020, uh, 1920 or something on a 1080p monitor. So if my mouse position is 0 to 19, so that would be less than 20 in the margin, then that means move left, so we subtract 1 from x. If it's the y position, this would be 0, this would be uh, whatever the height of my monitor is, 1080 I think. This would be 0, this would be 1080, so if it's less than 20, so that would be there, then subtract 1 from z, meaning move forward. And then for the other sides, we do if the position is greater than the viewport size, which is the screen width minus move margin. So like, let's say that would be like 1900 about. So if I'm my position is greater than 1900, which would be that area there, move to the right. And if it's greater than the Y position there, the screen size on the Y minus the move margin. So that area, that height there, then move backwards. And then, just in case you rotate the camera base, I just like to rotate the movement vector um, by along the y-axis by whatever the rotation is of on, on the y-axis of the camera base. And then you just do global translate move vector times delta times movement speed, so you move at 30 units per second. And then next, we're going to have a utility method, which will just do a raycast from the mouse. This is mostly just copied from the docs, so you get the convert the mouse position to a real world 3D position using the camera, and then you get the end position by, so this will be the start of the raycast, and the end of the raycast is going to be, we get the normal pointing out, the 3D normal pointing out from whatever the mouse position is at the camera, and then we add that to the start, and we multiply it by the ray length and we add it to the start and that gives us the end position of the ray cast. Then we just get the 3D space state and 
return the results of intersecting uh, a ray cast from the start to the end. We don't exclude anything, but we do pass in a collision mass to determine what to hit. So and then we're going to have a simple method called move all units, which will call raycast from mouse, passing in the movement position and one as the collision mass because we want to hit the environment. So let me show how collision masks work. So if the result is not empty, um, result is a dictionary. So this will be true if it's not empty. We're going to call the units group, the move to method, and pass in result position. So that'll be target position there. In that method. So we pass that in and then finally in our process method we're going to get the viewport, get the mouse position, and then call calculate move passing in delta and the mouse position. And then if we press the main command button Then we're going to call move all units. I think I typed that in right. Yeah. So we're going to call the move all units method there. So the collision mask here, how collision masks work, is if I go to 3D physics here, layer one. So I want to collide with the environment. So that's layer one right there. Layer two I could do also. But the way to do it, if you're not familiar with masks, is let's say. Here's a number. It's all zeros. This is a binary number. The first digit here on the right is going to be layer one. The second layer here corresponds to layer two, and then this is layer three. If I set that to a one, that means we can collide with layer one. If I select, set that to a one, it means we can collide with layer two, and so on. But if I set all three of these, that means I can collide with layer one, two, and three. That means I can collide with 2 and 3. So this is also a binary number. So if I convert this from binary to decimal, this is a 0, this is a 1, this is a 3, um, I can just pass in that decimal number as the collision mask. So if you don't know how to convert it, go look up a binary to decimal converter online and whatever collision mask you're trying to do, just figure it out like this, you know, which layers do I want to mask on so I want to hit layer one so let's do that I want to hit layer three and then just copy and paste this into a converter and use whatever number comes out as your collision mask so let's save that and let's add some units to the world so instance a unit here and let's run this select the world as the main scene and then you can see if I move the mouse to the edges of the screen, it moves. And if I right click, they all move together. And of course, they bump into each other and kind of get stuck a little bit, which we'll address in a next, uh, a future episode.